and welcome to Brand X Reviews. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the new Sylvester Stallone movie, Samaritan, which came out last Friday as I record this. I watched it the day of release, I got myself a Dirty Mackies, it was bank holiday weekend and I enjoyed it. But for context, Stallone is obviously somebody who a lot of people are a big fan of, as you can see from uh, my place here. I've got a lot of his uh, stuff, memorabilia, this and that, all over the place. A lot of this stuff I've had since childhood as well. Uh, this Rambo figure has seen better days, but there you go. Uh, I've got all of his films, almost. Um, I've got, well, all the ones that are worth having, and even a few that aren't worth having as well. Um, I make no apologies for this. I'm a very forgiving Stallone fan. I even have stop on my mum will shoot. Um, so, yeah, it is what it is anyway. But, obviously, Stallone is a guy who is well known for the action movies of specifically the 80s and 90s. But he's had more to his career than that. He was really on top of that game back in the day. Him and Schwarzenegger, I think, were pretty much parallel. Um, but in some ways, one's success kind of outdid the other. And obviously, there was a lot of com competition between the two. It's not really the point of this video as such, but I think, to me, Stallone is the one that stands out as the guy who was the best actor. Um, Schwarzenegger kind of had his moments but Stallone had quite a few films uh, to his name like Rocky for example uh, and obviously later on made films like Copland as well where he really did show that he was a legitimately good actor with quite a lot of range um, but like I say I think he gets misjudged for a lot of the kind of dumb action movies as entertaining as they were and some of the kind of uh, bad ones that he's done over the years as well but uh, given that he's still going, that's the, the really amazing thing. Just for, like, say, the context here, I mean, obviously Schwarzenegger had a bit of a comeback in 2013. He'd done some appearances in a couple of Expendables movies at that point. Obviously, he had a successful career as a politician and a bodybuilder that Stallone can't obviously say he did uh, to the same degree. But... Um, he did make a comeback with Schwarzenegger in 2013 with The Last Stand. And he did a couple of other good movies as well, but that was pretty much it, and I don't expect it anymore. Stallone did some quite a few more films, and he also directed. He got some recognition at the Oscars. Not that I really give the Oscars much merit, but it is what it is. And he's still going as well. I mean, Schwarzenegger, I think, has released a good movie in quite a few years now. I've written him off as um, anybody who's going to do any more movies that are worth watching. Stallone, on the other hand, just a few days ago, like I say, with this new one, Samaritan, has released a pretty good film here. So uh, I'm going to get into the specifics of that film in my review. But like I say, just for context, I wanted to give a bit of an overview, like I say, of Stallone's career, his legacy as more than just an action star, but a pretty good actor as well. And he's also had longevity too. So anyway, I'll, I'll leave it short. I'll cut it short, should I say. And uh, let's get on with the actual review itself now. So Friday 26th of August 2022, we saw the release of the new Sylvester Stallone movie, Samaritan. And this got a release on Amazon Prime, um, specifically on there. I don't believe it had a dual cinema release. I'm going to get into the cinema versus streaming argument later on in this video. And then I'm not going to go into spoilers until the very end. In fact, we're going to end the video. It's going to cut away and then we're going to come back and go into spoilers. So it's a complete video if you want to watch for non-spoilers, but there is a bit right at the arse end where, you can, where we're just going to get into the spoilers. But um, the actual movie itself, brief synopsis if you've not seen the trailer. Um... It's similar to the movie Unbreakable with Bruce Willis, the one from 2000, where it's kind of a, a different take on the superhero genre. I mean, that film was a little bit more rooted and grounded in reality. Or it, it felt that way than, than a lot of other movies that, that kind of deal with superheroes. Um, this one's a little bit more fantastic, a little bit more fantasy to it. Um, but it does still kind of get into if a superhero actually existed in the real world, um, how would that work? Now, it doesn't really kind of say superhero in this. This is more... Um, I mean, I guess it is. It's a superhero movie, but they looked at as kind of more like gods in this movie, the way, the way it kind of plays out. But the basic gist of it is that up to about 20 years ago, we had these two guys, Nemesis and Samaritan. They were brothers 
and they had superhuman abilities, the usual kind of thing, like indestructible, uh, super strength, that kind of thing. Um, one of the brothers was used his powers for good. The other brother, I guess they kind of depict him as evil. But his thing was more, he was very angry and filled with rage. And that brought him to be at odds with his brother Samaritan. So Nemesis is kind of the bad guy, the way that it's told. But this is all a prologue. This isn't what the movie's about. This is right at the beginning. It kind of tells you what happened up till 20 years ago. The two brothers had a fight. Nemesis created a weapon, which was like a giant hammer. Um, and that was the only thing that could kill his brother Samaritan because it had the, the super strength inserted into it. It was built out of the rage of Nemesis himself. He put all of his rage, his strength into this hammer and it became a super weapon. A bit like Thor's hammer, basically, but with a really, with a really big shaft, all double entendres aside. Um... So the, the two of them got into a fight. Um, Nemesis was... Well, I think they were both believed to have died, but a lot of people thought that Samaritan might have survived it. 20 years later, which is the, where the film really begins, after this little prologue that tells you all that stuff, it mostly follows this 13-year-old boy. And if you see the film Last Action Hero, it's kind of got... Um, some of that kind of thing going on to where in that movie the main character in a lot of ways is is the child who was a fan of Schwarzenegger's character in that movie this is fairly similar so you've got this 13 year old boy and he's really the main person in the movie Stallone is kind of the leading actor but the film for the most part follows this this young boy who's 13 and he's very good as well I don't say that as a negative uh, he's a very good actor to be honest very likeable and very just good in this role and uh, he get, he's getting bullied, all this kind of stuff. There's this guy that works for the um, waste disposal, a garbage man type type guy who lives across the road from them. And he's played by Sylvester Stallone, obviously. The little boy figures out that Stallone is Samaritan. And some stuff happens, it becomes very evident that that is correct and that he's not wrong. And... Uh, Stuff happens throughout the movie at the same time. There's also um, this kind of, um, not a low level, but kind of like a, a criminal guy who runs, runs street gangs, that kind of thing, who wants to discover, rediscover Nemesis by locating the weapon, the, um, the hammer that Nemesis had had and some of the other gear, his mask and his armour and all that kind of stuff. So he can then kind of take over and become this new... Um, well, he thinks he's a good guy, you know, the usual thing, you know, depending on how you look at things. Again, that plays into the heart and soul of the movie. And it's kind of a social justice warrior um, movement that he's got behind him because he starts a lot of riots and, and things like that. He gets a lot of followers, street gangs, that kind of thing. So a lot of people, they think that they are the good guys. But in fact, they're actually bad guys to normal people. People that are burning down buildings and so on. And that have got a, a criminal a hierarchy at the peak of, of that movement. A bit like Black Lives Matter, for example, run by trained Marxists, their words. Whilst their followers are burning down buildings, a lot of us see them as bad guys. But a lot of people see them as fundamentally the good guys and justify everything that they do. That's what you've kind of got here with this um, this villain in the movie who's kind of getting Nemesis um, to come back or wanting Nemesis to make a comeback. So all that stuff's going on anyway. Um, meanwhile, Stone's kind of getting involved with that, you know, his character, Samaritan. Um, and yeah, stuff goes down. There's a big battle right at the end of the movie. I don't want really to get too much into spoilers until right at the end of this video. So don't worry, it's safe to keep watching. But uh, yeah, it's 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 a decent kind of um, what you call a, a one and done movie. It doesn't really seem like it's leading into a sequel. It just is what it is. It's a one off. I don't think they're going to do a sequel to, to it, to be honest. Um, when we get into whether or not they should have had a theatrical release, I think it was worthy of it, to be honest. Um, it's obviously mo the modern era movies get released on streaming. Stallone's one of those actors that I think is very difficult to sell. Um, 
compared to a lot of others. I mean, obviously, he's got his older generation fans uh, from myself onwards. And but a lot of younger people, I don't think if they see that a Stallone film is coming out, that means anything to them, to be honest, sadly. So uh, it's good having him in this. But unfortunately, from the point of view of a cinema release, I think it might have been a bit tricky making a lot of money out of it. And the movie itself, as it was released, you can tell it's a lower budget movie, which is why I would say I forgive things like the, the CGI being a little bit ropey in some points. You know, if you were to compare it to like a big Marvel movie or something like that, not that I go watch that crap anyway. Um, I would say obviously it doesn't compare. So if you did see this in the cinema, you might think, uh, oh, they should have just released that on streaming. But then you watch it on streaming, and I'm kind of thinking it was worthy of a cinema release. But um, yeah, it's just one of those things where I think that it's difficult nowadays for for certain actors that were just huge back in the day to get cinema releases. That's why we see films like The Fat Man, which was a Mel Gibson movie about Santa Claus, pretty good dark comedy, did a review of it at the time. Uh, Bill and Ted Face the Music, the, the 2019 Shaft movie, uh, Coming to America 2. Um, regardless as to whether or not these had kind of simultaneous cinema releases, uh, these were, from memory, I think all of those may have been streaming to some capacity or straight to video. Uh, back when they came out. Depends what country you live in as well. But um, of those movies, I think this is one that I think just kind of was a little bit beyond that. I think it was um, was one that did seem like it, it was worthy of a cinema release, in my opinion. Now, uh, obviously, um, this is 2022, so a lot of reviews nowadays, if you look at the scores and so on, can be a little bit disingenuous when you kind of collate things together. This has quite a low score, I think. Some of the um, the critic scores on Rotten Tomatoes, for example, kind of giving this a low score. I can't remember why. I remember, I remember seeing the scores for this and thinking, there's something not right there. There's some kind of an agenda. I don't know if it's some culture war thing or whatever. I can't see how because this movie doesn't really get into that. But then again, I don't think you have to. I mean, um, Terminal List didn't get into that at all. Yeah, it was called Right Wing. I didn't get that out of it at all. Um, I mean, if it had come out 10 years earlier, it would have been, yeah, I don't think it would have. anyone would have gone there. So it's kind of difficult. So if you see the point, point I'm going into anyway, if you see any scores or anything like that for this and they look on the low side, I think there's something more going on here. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't really make sense. I think there's an agenda behind it all anyway, but I'm not going to get into that. So, uh, like I say, um, I recommend this movie. Stallone is very good in it. It's great that he's still doing films and that he's quite good in them as well. He's not phoning in a performance. I certainly didn't get that out of this. It seemed like this is a movie that he wanted to make, that he wanted to be in anyway. Um, as I say, the, the main character in the movie is the 13-year-old boy, in my opinion. Uh, he is one that uh, we see the film through, well, from his point of view anyway, and it does seem like he's got the most screen time. So obviously with it being a lower budget movie, maybe Stallone was uh, obviously charging a little bit more than this this young actor was, uh, I guess. So, um, but don't let that put you off, because like I say, the, the kid is very good, and Stallone is in enough of the movie as well. I'm thinking of another Mel Gibson one, actually, boss level, that Mel Gibson was the villain in that one, and he wasn't in it a huge amount, but the way that I saw it being advertised. Obviously, it was a Frank Grillo movie, but it was Mel Gibson's in it as well. But we get we, we know the score with a lot of these movies. A lot of the time, these big-name actors from back in the day, they're only in it for about five minutes of screen time or whatever. Stallone is in a lot of this film. A lot of this is about him. And, uh, yeah, so don't, don't worry too much. Anyway, I'll, I'll cut it short there. That's my review. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away and then I'm going to come back for anyone who wants to get into some mild... Well, some well, pretty major spoilers, actually. Um, so I'll leave it there anyway for now. Um, if, if you want to stay watching the spoilers, carry on. But uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Brondex Reviews, all that stuff. You can subscribe to the channel. You can like the video. Um, I'm just going to get into some affiliated um, links that I've got. And then we're going to come back for spoilers. 
very quick 10 second promo and affiliated link for you with a discount code tactical soap we've got maverick bond and durden check out the video description for a link and a discount code so now we're into spoilers. I'm just going to talk for a few minutes here at the most about the um, the twist that comes into this movie at the end. So basically, as I was saying, there was a bit of a prologue at the beginning of the film which kind of sets things up. So up till about 20 years before this movie begins, so let's just say early, early 2000s, um, there were these two guys, Nemesis, who was full of hate and, um, and ended up falling out with his, bro with his brother Samaritan. These two guys are twins, Nemesis and Samaritan. Um, Samaritan is the good guy, effectively. The two had a fight, and Samaritan was the survivor. Nemesis fell to his death. Samaritan just kind of retired after that point until he got discovered later on, and it was Sylvester Stallone. Now, the twist is that isn't actually true. Samaritan died. Nemesis survived. The Stallone character is Nemesis. That doesn't mean he's the villain of the film. It just means if you'd have rewound 20 years, he would have been the villain uh, because he was a bad guy. But after everything that happened, Nemesis uh, killed his... Well, he, he didn't kill him. He, he kind of fell to his death, uh, technically. But, um, but yeah, Nemesis was, was the bad guy. But there's a redemption arc there as well. So... He retired as Nemesis, Samaritan actually died, and that's pretty much the plot twist. It was a little bit predictable, to be fair, because right at the beginning of the movie, when it shows kind of flashbacks to back in the day when Nemesis and Samaritan were on the streets, um, you don't see the face. You know, there's something very ambiguous going on there as to like which one was which and which, you know, why we're we not seeing him as Stallone. Um, yeah, that was the reason. So it was a little bit predictable. I saw it coming. But it was a good twist anyway. And it, it plays out very well as well. And the way he kind of reveals himself to the, the actual bad guys. Because obviously you've got this this bad guy in in this movie who's kind of like a crime lord. Kind of low-level crime lord, I guess. But he wants to bring back Nemesis and kill Samaritan. But it turns out who he thinks is Samaritan, it's Stallone, is actually Nemesis. And when he says, when he kind of corrects him on that, it's pretty cool. So uh, yeah, it's like I say, it's a good, it's a good plot twist. It's a bit predictable, but it plays out very well. I mean, how many times have you rewatched a film where you know the story, but you still enjoy it a second time around, even though you know it? Don't kind of worry the fact that it's predictable that's the only you know the, the the unpredictability of it is the only like entertaining factor here it isn't why do you re-watch movies that you enjoy uh, that would be my argument there so i wouldn't let the fact that i i think that it's that it's a bit predictable in, in places put you off because it's still enjoyable regardless anyway so as i say that was the kind of spoil was the only thing i wanted to really throw out there because that's a it's a positive like i said there's a redemption arc to this movie so other than it just being um another unbreakable kind of re well, not remake but um that kind of movie um it's, it's still got something good about it anyway so right, I'm gonna leave it there. I don't really think I've got anything else to say about this. As I say, it was it was very entertaining. Um, didn't let me down. I think it was uh, a good one for Stallone to do at this point in his career as well. It's better than nothing. Um, if it had to be straight to video or nothing, then so be it. Because uh, like I say, it was definitely one that was worth making, and I suggest it's worth watching as well. So if you get a chance, do it. Right. I will leave it there. As I say, Brand X Reviews, um, you can like the video, you can subscribe to the channel. But for now, for now, I will say it. Thank you very much for watching.